Hey everybody, Keith Tanner here from Fly Miata, and today we're gonna go through a quick rundown on how to bleed your brakes. This is fundamental maintenance for any vehicle. Um, if you watched our previous video on uh, brake fluid, you know this is something you should be doing on a regular basis, no matter what your vehicle, no matter how you use it. And on hard used vehicles, such as this one here, it should be done more often. So we're shooting this live right now. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, if you're watching this in the future sometime, we'll do our best to answer them in the comments. Um, and of course, if you enjoy this sort of content, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. We love seeing you guys watch this, so let us know that you're watching it. So I did a video a little while back on brake fluid, talking about the different types of brake fluid, the different ratings of brake fluid, why you want to change it, but the fact that it absorbs water out of the air over time and that makes it more likely to boil and more likely to get you in trouble effectively. So we're not gonna go into how often you should change brake fluid, why you should change brake fluid. I recommend you go back and have a look at that video to learn some of the tech behind it. Today, we're just gonna talk about how to actually do the bleeding. And it is a pretty easy thing you can do at home in your own, uh, in your own driveway. Um, you can do it with an assistant. I have Jeremy sitting in the, in the driver's seat of the, uh, there you go, <laughs> sitting in the driver's seat to activate the pedal for me. Um, but we have a couple of different ways that this can be done, and I will talk about those as, as we go. But the basic stuff you need to do this is a fresh bottle or can of brake fluid, unopened. You always want to use an unopened can because as I said, it does absorb moisture from the air. So if it's been opened, it's basically stale. We're, not look we're looking to replace stale brake fluid. So fresh can of brake fluid, something, some sort of can or reservoir to hold the old stuff that's gonna be coming out and some clear tubing in this case. This is not a valve, this is just a way to stick it together. Um, and in this case, we've closed it off with a uh, little set of pliers in there. I forget, uh, what are those, rheostats or hemostats with, with a hemostat on there, but basically just a, a hose and a bottle. Um, this will help when it comes to doing a full flush. I'll get to that in a moment. You need appropriate wrenches for your bleeder screws and some brake cleaner uh, some towels, and I recommend wearing some gloves just because this stuff is, is slimy. Um, it also is bad for paint, so don't go finger painting on the side of your car when you're in the middle of this job. This will just keep life a little bit cleaner. Now what we're going to do today is just a simple bleed. We're just going to be changing out the fluid that's near the calipers, that's in the calipers, because that's the stuff that sees the most abuse from track use. If we were doing a full flush, it's basically the same procedure, just longer. So. Um, let's walk around and first have a look at the master cylinder. You're going to need to know where that is. Front of the car, under the hood, in case you're looking for a hint. It'll be on the driver's side. In this case, we're talking about a left-hand drive car, but this is the master cylinder um, reservoir. It is shared amongst the clutch and the brakes on the ND here. Um, NAs and MBs have a separate reservoir. If we were doing a full, a full flush, looking to completely replace all the fluid, the first thing I would do would be to open this up and then use something like this big syringe or a turkey baster um, to suck out the fluid that's in there because that way we've got fresh fluid going into the master cylinder. We don't have to bleed quite as much. You can skip that step, but basically you're going to be basically just diluting this reservoir more and more. It'll take a lot longer to get it done. If you do use a turkey baster, I recommend you use a turkey baster that is dedicated specifically to doing brake work because trust me, you don't really want brake fluid flavored turkey. It's not as good as you might think. So in this case, we are filled up to the max already. We don't have to do anything, um, but you do want to keep an eye on this while you're bleeding everything. You don't want this to go dry because once you suck air into the master cylinder, basically it's a lot more work to get it out. You're gonna have to spend a lot more time bleeding and getting those bubbles work through the entire system. So do not let this run dry, keep an eye on it. Um, it doesn't go down too quickly, but if you forget, you will be sad. So let's, uh, I'll leave this open for now so I don't go in here with messy hands and deal with it. I'll crack my brake fluid open now too, because it's easier before I get brake fluid all over my hands. You see, this is sealed from the factory, so you can tell this is a new one, and that this fluid has been protected from the elements. Little suckers on there, hard. All right. Okay, so I've got this ready. I'll just keep it close to the master cylinder. Now the order in which we do this is a, is a popular topic of conversation. And basically you want to start with the wheel that's furthest away from the master cylinder and you work your way towards it. 
Now exactly where the furthest way is depends on the undercar plumbing of the, uh, of the car. Generally speaking, on an NA and NB, you're going to start with the left rear wheel and you work your way counterclockwise around the car. On an NC and an ND, you'll start on the right rear wheel and you work your way clockwise around the car. That's just the way it works out because of the way the plumbing works. It's not critical. Honestly, if you mess it up and you do one wheel before the other, it's not going to cause any major problems. It just works a little bit better, a little more smoothly if you follow that order. Um, but generally, back and then front and you'll be in pretty good shape. I'll get my gloves on. We'll start at the back here, as noted. Okay, this will just keep me from making so much of a so much of a mess of myself. If you have a container that can be hung down, put some sort of hook on here, it'll make your life a lot easier. You'll make less likely to make a mess. Let's put this on here for now. Okay, now this car is fitted with Willwood calipers. The procedure is the same whether you're running Willwoods or whether you're running stock calipers. Um, the only difference is this one has a bleeder screw on each side. Also has them on the bottom, ignore those. That's because it's a universal caliper. Um, when you have them on the inside and the outside, again, you go with the one furthest away from the master cylinder. You do the outside one first, and then you do the inside one. So in this case, it's a quarter inch wrench. Well, let's drop it over there first. You can also use a flare wrench for this, but there's no need for a full-on flare wrench. You can just use a regular closed end. If you use the open end, you can do it, but if you start slipping this thing off and you start rounding off this flare nut, you will eventually be a sad puppy. So I don't recommend it. So I'll put this on here. It's been closed up for a while. There we go. So basically this, this goes over the end of the bleed screw. And I also find this easier if you have a flashlight. You can sort of backlight the fluid. And you can see it's, it's collecting down the bottom here. The reason we have this hose and this reservoir is so that when we start pumping things, um, if we do suck any back, it'll just suck the stuff back that's in the uh, that's in the actual tube. So first step, we get a little bit of pressure in the system, and this is where my assistant Jeremy comes in. He's going to pump the pedal about three times and then hold it. So can you pump for me? Two, three, hold. All right, and so we're just going to talk to each other. He says he's holding it. I'll open this up. Blorp. Well, you can see the change in color there, can't you? Okay, I close it again. All right, pump. And this is fundamentally what's going on. Okay, again. Okay, it's closed. You can relax for a second. I will do the inner one. And again, this is a this is where, this is where we make the mess. Try not to get too much of that on the ground. And this is going to be a little hard to see. I apologize for that. Okay, pump. And as we're doing this, um, you can keep an eye for little bubbles. Okay, pump. Uh, keep an eye for little bubbles coming through here. If you are seeing those, that's where you're, if you're feeling a soft pedal, that's where it's coming from. Those little bubbles are compressing when you press the pedal. Okay, you can relax for a second. Um, those little bubbles are compressing when you're, when you're pressing the pedal. They're not doing their job in terms of pushing the, the um, the pads in. So we want to keep bleeding until there are no bubbles coming through there. Uh, one thing you can get in trouble with is if you open these uh, bleeders too far, they'll start sucking air in around the threads and you'll start seeing bubbles. You'll never get rid of those. So don't drive yourself crazy. Open it up just enough that you start getting fluid. So basically we'll keep doing that. If we we're doing a full flush, we'd keep doing that until we started seeing nice clear fluid coming through here because new brake fluid is nice and clear. Um, you used to be able to get stuff that was different colors so you could tell when you got to the new stuff. It's unfortunately not on the market anymore. It's all this sort of apple juice color. But that's the, uh, that's the procedure for the rear. Now before I go anywhere else, I'm going to go double check to make sure we haven't run low on our master cylinder. We didn't pull very much of that out, but it's, it's a good habit. So we haven't dropped much, but I'll put a little bit more in there. Be careful with this. It won't take paint off instantly, but it won't do your paint any favors. There we go. Just top that up. This might seem a little bit wasteful to always get rid of the can of fluid, but this is the definition of a consumable. So this is how it works. I'll go through this procedure, the sort of the standard procedure first, and then when I'm done with that, I'll go through some of the variations you can use. 
other ways to do this that are a little bit easier, might be able to do solo, that sort of thing. Now again, this has got two bleeders on it. Um, the factory, the factory uh, Brembo's are like that, Woolwood's are like that. Uh, the factory non-Brembo calipers, there we go, only have one, so you would just bleed that one. Again, we'll start on the outside. You can see I'm making a mess. All right, can you pump? Bloop. Okay, pump. Now see, every time I open that up, it's releasing the pressure on the brakes. And so you may not be able to hear Jeremy, but he's letting me know that the pedal's going down to the floor. And that means that basically there's not, nothing else is gonna come out. Okay, pump. So I close it up and he pumps again. So that's all it is. He pumps, I open, close, and then he pumps again. And we just keep doing that until we have the fluid that we're looking for um, coming through here. Okay, this will be the last one here. And we close. All right, you can relax. It's always polite to tell your helper to relax because otherwise they're sitting there trying to press that brake pedal through the firewall as you're wandering around yappering on about things or cleaning something up. They get upset. Okay. I'll try this one more time. Can you pump? Oh, I don't have it in the right place. Hang on a second. You can see why I'm wearing gloves. This particular one, there we go. Make a mess otherwise. You still holding? Okay, pump. Okay, one more time. All right, relax. And that's basically it. We just keep going around and doing that for each wheel until we are at the situation we want to be in. Let me just close this up. I'm gonna hide behind you here. Now, remember, we did say this stuff is a little hard on paint. It's not necessarily good for uh, coefficient of friction either. So I've got some brake cleaner and I'll just give these a couple little squirts and clean everything up when I'm done. Partly because you don't really want the stuff on the pads and also because, I mean, it can eventually damage the paint on your wheels, that sort of thing, if it's left to sit for a long time. All right, and the last thing I will do, I've pretended I've done all four wheels, is double check the uh, master cylinder, make sure that it's topped up. In this case, it is almost at the full mark. And we'll go through and finish the job later when we're not shooting a live video, but we will, we will do all the wheels. Give this thing a proper flush. But that's effectively it. Now, variations, other things you can do. You can jump out if you want to, Jeremy. Um, other things you can do with this, uh, you can use a pressure bleeder, which is basically, it puts, it's a, it's a container of uh, pressurized brake fluid that feeds into the top of the reservoir and provides that pressurized fluid. So instead of having Jeremy in there pumping away, the whole system is pressurized from the, from the pressure bleeder and you just crack open the various, um, the various bleeders. I personally, that's a very quick way to do it. Uh, you'll see it in a lot of pro shops because it is so quick. I personally find I don't get quite as good a pedal out of it. It's possible for it to introduce micro bubbles in here. Um, and it's very convenient, very quick. You can do it by yourself. But as I said, I'm not as happy with the pedal, so I don't personally use that uh, technique myself. Another option is, and this is one that fly me out of cells, is to install speed bleeders. I never did clean up these today. Um, install speed bleeders here, which are basically bleed screws with a little, valve, a little ball valve. So when you crack them open, and stomp on the pedal, they bleed out, but they don't suck back in again. So in that case, what you would do would be, I think we talked about this in another video, be crack the bleeder open with your hose on, and then you jump in the passenger seat, go boom, or driver's seat, pump the pedal, uh, and then come back, close it up, take your hose off. So you don't need the second assistant. There's another way to do it that I like to do. Okay, one more is to use a vacuum bleeder, which is a, like a mighty vac, a little vacuum pump, and you basically use suck the fluid out. From this end. That way it works. I find it a little bit messy. Um, you've got to have the uh, you've got to have the tool on hand of course, but it's effective. My favorite way of doing this is a little bit slower, but it works well on especially on vehicles with really convoluted brake lines. Like old Land Rovers this is the way to do it. 
It's called a gravity bleed. And that is basically you just crack this open and let it drool. It's like a pressure bleed in that the, the pressure is coming just from, back, just from the force of gravity because the master cylinder is higher than these are. Are your foot off the pedal? Yeah, leave it off, please. So you just crack that open and let it drool. It's not fast. And this works very well with a flashlight. Let me grab my flashlight. If you have bubbles, you can watch. You can see how it's, it's um, piled up on top, of the, uh, on top of the bleed screw there. Close this up again so you can see it happen. Crack that open and it goes blurp. If you have bubbles, you'll see those. There's a couple of little tiny ones. You'll see those bubbles coming out as you do this. And this is very slow. So you've got lots of time. You can even do all four wheels if you want, at once if you want to. Um, I find this really effective if I'm at the track, for example, and I've got the brakes are getting soft because they're getting really, really hot. Sometimes I'll just do this. It'll, it'll fix things up a little bit. But you can do it solo. It gives a really, really good pedal in my experience. Um, and the chance of running low on anything is pretty low as long because you've got lots of time to monitor the reservoir because you're not having to be at the wheel. It's not super popular, um, but it's one I like to use. And like I said, I get a very good pedal out of it. Do we have any questions over there, guys? Ah, uh, the ABS. Okay, so let's, let's address the ABS thing. Um, you want to come over here for a second there, Travis? So the ABS, I'll come over here. ABS pump is full of valves. It's got all of the brake lines come in here. They all come out again. There's lots of places for air to get stuck in here. There's also lots of little, little dead ends for old brake fluid to sit. So ideally, if you want to do a really good flush of the system, you want to engage, you want to trigger the ABS. Um, interestingly, this isn't in the Mazda factory manual. They don't actually tell you to do this, um, but it does give you a better pedal because ABS systems are harder to bleed and get a really good pedal out of. And the way you can do that, if you have a late NA, there are two pins in the diagnostic box you can trigger and that will cycle the pump once or twice. If you're a Mazda tech and you have the MMDS um, diagnostic service tool, you can press a button on there and it will boom, 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 it'll run this once or twice and that'll cycle through some of that air, some of that fluid. Or you take your car out, we put the wheels back on, take your car out and engage the ABS, go out on a, on a dirt road or something like that, but nail the brakes hard enough that the ABS pump starts cycling, you get the shutter through the, through the pedal and then you come back and you do it again. It's awkward, it's a pain in the butt, um, but that's how you get all the nooks and crannies. Um, generally speaking, you can just ignore it unless you have a problem with, a, with really, really contaminated fluid or a lot of air bubbles. So let's go back to the, uh, back to the table here, Travis. Do we have more questions? No more questions. Do we have a question from the car, yes. So the question is, what's the difference between doing this and bleeding the clutch? It's not radically different um, because the clutch is effectively a, uh, it's a, it's a closed hydraulic system, just like the brakes. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to try to bleed. It works very well with a gravity bleed, honestly. You just crack that one open, let it drool and keep an eye on it. One thing about clutch fluid is it's always dark. I think it's because it gets moved so much, it tends to turn very, very dark very, very quickly. Um, so you will notice when you're looking under the hood of your car that the reservoir, if you have a separate reservoir for the clutch fluid, it's always dark, always nasty looking. That is the nature of clutch fluid. Um, clutch fluid doesn't see the same sort of temperature loads that brake fluids do because it's not trying to absorb a whole bunch of heat. So it's less critical that it be done regularly. But if you're doing the brakes, you might as well do the clutch. And like I said, on those, I, I honestly find a gravity bleed works as well as anything. Okay, other questions we have. ABS, ABS, ABS. <laughs> Uh, so one of the questions is, do you need to bleed brakes if you install stainless steel lines? And, and the fact of the matter is, anytime you've cracked into the system, anytime you've basically had brake fluid on your hands, you probably should bleed just to make sure. There are techniques you can use to minimize the amount of air you get in the system when you're doing this, but basically if you've seen fluid, if you've been into the system in the hydraulics, you do really need to get in there and bleed the system. And this works for any car. I've done this exact same technique on Tesla, I've done the same technique on classic minis, on classic Range Rovers. Anything using hydraulic brakes, the bleeding procedure is basically the same. Sometimes a little bit harder to get some of that air out, um, but the fundamentals are the same. Pump, crack, close, pump, crack, close, over and over and over again. 
And one of the questions here is, I used a power bleeder and shot air down my rear, into my rear lines. How long do I bleed to fix this? <laughs> That's the problem with some of the tools you get out there. If you don't use them all the time, especially it's really easy to sort of, whoops, screw something up. Um, in this case, basically you keep bleeding until you don't have any more air coming out of the caliper. And that's why you start at the one furthest away from the master cylinder to make sure you push the air out that way. And then there's less air in the system for the next one, less air in the system for the next one, less for the next one. So you're eventually it will get less and less air as you go around. Um, one other note, when you are watching the master cylinder, when you're doing the pumping, when you're watching the reservoir, the front brakes will more, move more fluid generally than the rears do. Um, I don't really have a good reason for why that is because it's not really related to the piston size, but you have to keep a bigger eye on the reservoir for the front than you do for the rear. Any other questions over there, guys? Could you cover bleeding the brakes on a caliper with two valves? Okay, so the question is, can I cover bleeding the brakes on a caliper with two valves? Well, that's effectively what this is. This Wilwood caliper, well, it's really got four, but there's one on each side. Because it's, because it's a fixed caliper with opposing pistons, the, piston, the two pistons on this side are hydraulically separate from the two on this side. So I have to bleed the outside side first, and then the inside. These ones on the bottom, there's not gonna be any air down there. The entire point of a bleeder is at the high point of the caliper. Um, this is simply because this caliper can be installed on the left of the wheel or the right. Uh, and so sometimes this is the top. On the other side of the car, it's got this exact same caliper. These ones are the top. You don't open these because that's a drain, not a bleed screw. <laughs> there's really no reason to touch those. Um, one thing to watch for with Will Woods is especially if the previous person got very excited when snugging down these um, these bleed screws, sometimes this adapter will start moving. So you're gonna have to get a, get a wrench on there to hold the adapter in place and then open and close. That's very much a, a Wheelwood and some other aftermarket calipers, they tend to be like this. Um, but if it has this two piece adapter, it's good practice to hold it in place, especially if it's giving you trouble and you crack that thing open and it starts leaking out through there, you're not gonna be able to bleed it properly. So something to keep in mind, I always make sure I've got both on hand. These ones, I know the guys who have been doing all the bleeding on these, I know that nobody here over tightens these, so I was not concerned about them moving around. But it's been a long time where if someone unknown, some unknown gorilla has been working on these things, you may have to do that and just hold it in place as you crack it open and closed. Any more questions? Okay, well, it is a fairly simple procedure. Um, well, I did skip the obvious start, get the car up in the air, take the wheels off, but we'll take that as an assumption. Um, if you have any questions, please do put them in the comments. If you enjoy this sort of content, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual things. We'll be back next week with some more live video. We'll keep putting installation videos on the Fly Miata YouTube channel. But in the meantime, my name is Keith Tanner. Thanks for your attention. Have a good day.